This week, we've seen an amazing demonstration of power by the owners of 12 European football clubs who, unbeknown to their managers, players and supporters, proposed a new European Super League, something that was going to be a bit of a closed shop with no relegations from it. They made the assumption that the fans would be happy to go along with their plans. It was going to bring the clubs, or those clubs, a lot of money, much to the detriment of many of the clubs who are not part of this rather cosy little group. The announcement certainly caused much wailing and gnashing of teeth in my Aston Villa supporting household this week. But within a couple of days, English clubs who had been just so keen on the idea, while well, they'd withdrawn from the plan, they'd been forced to apologise to their fans and to their supporters. Power had been demonstrated, this time not by the owners, but by the fans, the footballing authorities, the government, and apparently even some royalty, leading to the U-turn. Power was wielded and pressure applied to bring about that change. And it's amazing what can happen where people work together, isn't it? It wasn't lost on me what Christians might be able to accomplish if we all work together rather than kept to our different cliques. But it was a very different, powerful group of people that Peter was addressing in our first reading this morning from the Book of Acts. He was speaking to the rulers, elders, scribes, Anas, the high priest, along with other members of the high priestly family. It was really quite some gathering of the Jewish authorities. And this part of the story took place following the healing of a man who had been crippled from birth. Peter had told the man to, in the name of Jesus to get up and walk. Following this, Peter taught the people he explained to them that it was God's power and faith in the name of Jesus that had led to the man being healed. And he carried on teaching, teaching them all about the good news of Jesus. And over the last uh, period of time, the number of Jesus' followers had been growing in, well, quite frankly, a spectacular fashion. We know there are 120 in the first chapter of Acts. And it's now um, gone right up to 5,000. So putting all those things together, it's really not at all surprising that the Jewish leaders wanted to speak to Peter and John. So they were held in custody overnight following their arrest so that a hearing could take place. So Peter and John stood before the great and the good of the Jewish authorities. And they must have been very aware that it was not so very long ago that Jesus himself had been dragged before the authorities before being sentenced to death. But the authorities, not wanting to talk about the resurrection or anything else, got straight to the point of what they were really concerned about. By what power or by what name did you do these things? The second commandment states that you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. There is power in the name of God, which meant and means that you should not be, utter it carelessly. Peter and John knew all too well that they were therefore standing on some pretty dangerous theological ground. But Peter had grown, he'd grown into a leader he had seen pain, painfully at first hand what had happened to Jesus. And now, filled with the Holy Spirit, he more than defends what had taken place when he, the crippled man had been healed. And of course, I think it's somewhat ironic that it is the uneducated fishermen who speak with divine power to teach those who are in religious and polit political power and who are greatly concerned with maintaining their positions of power and authority about the true source of power. Not whose telephone numbers you may or may not have in your contacts list, in your mobile phone, or which school you went to, 
but God's power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was crucified and raised from the dead and who brings salvation. You can almost feel the tension in the room as Peter goes on using the scriptures with a misquote in, along the way to support his argument. And I think it's really important to say that Peter was not preaching against the whole Jewish people when he refers to the stone that was rejected by you, but was speaking to this small group of authorities who held tremendous power over the people, the leaders of the temple, and the Jewish nobles whom Rome entrusted with ruling and ensuring the peace of Judea. Because over the centuries, these words have been used to exclude the Jewish people from God's salvation with terrible consequences. Indeed, Thomas Aquinas, one of the great medieval doctors of the church, made it clear that Jews received salvation because God had promised it. Jews, like all of us, can receive salvation. Indeed, in our gospel reading, Jesus talks of being the shepherd to the sheep within the fold. And then also refer to sheep outside the fold. But most probably, the sheep outside the fold were the Gentiles. So it was the Jews, they were the sheep that were inside the fold. They were there already and to whom he was the good and noble shepherd. What Peter was really preaching about, but he, he was preaching against power and the misuse of power. He was preaching against those who were using it to maintain their own positions. He was standing up against those who had refused to acknowledge Jesus, who had rejected him, and who are now trying to contain this new movement of strange people. But it was a spirit filled movement and it was spreading. Whether or not the, the, whether or the authorities liked it or not. God's power cannot be contained. It couldn't be contained by the grave. It couldn't be contained by the authorities. And it cannot be contained now either. It's all too easy, I think, for us to become complicit with those who are in power of authority and authority to just go along with things for an easy life, not to put our heads above the parapet. But there are times when we need to speak out, to speak out against those who are in authority, to cry out for justice and for what is right. We might feel as though we are too inconsequential, that we don't have a voice. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to accomplish far more than we can ever ask or imagine, as St. Paul puts it in his letter to the Ephesians. We are called to speak and to do God's work, not through our own strength and resources, tempting as that often is, but knowing that true power only comes from God, God who raised Christ from the dead and who brings salvation.